Hi, my name is Brianna Motskis, and I'm with the Fabric Patch in Efreda, Washington. And today we are doing ooh, month four of our Color Dance Block of the Month. So we're working on month four out of your pattern, but we probably have six or seven classes for color dance out there. We started with making sure you get your pattern. You can get the pattern and even the colorway kit that I'm working on on our website at fabricpatch.net. If you've kind of been following along and you want to make your own, you can do that. And we also talked about if you want to do it out of your stash or from your local quilt shop that may or may not have the collection for you. You can do all of that. So we've been working through the classes together. It's very beginner friendly. It's a lot of repetition. So you'll notice the next, this month, next month are things we've done in the past that we're gonna put all together to make our blocks. And then we'll get together one more time and do all of the finishing, get all those blocks put together and actually get a quilt totally put together so you can get it to your long armor or you yourself can get it quilted and give it away or maybe just hang, hung up on your quilt ladder at home. So month four is pretty fun. So there's of course two different colorways. You can do a bright or what they call is a shy, more muted colors. Mine is the shy setting, more muted colors. And what we're doing is we're kind of working back from last month. So if you were here last month, you knew that we made some components that we'll do for this month. This month we are doing our star and a star block. Super great. Some more geese units, which is fantastic. We're going to do more geese unit next month, but geese are fun and super great. I'm going to show you a new way this month. If you want to do something different, if you're tired of rectangles and squares, I'm going to show you another way to make geese two at a time using just squares. So let's go ahead and look down at the cutting table and I'll show you all of our pieces. Okay, so I'm going to show you real fast uh, month three. So last month when we got together, we finished with some flying geese units and just pieces to wrap around our star block for this month. So you'll see some strange pieces from last month that you haven't used. Still okay. You're still going strong. Here we are. Month four, you'll see the color card. If you've noticed that my blocks are a different color than what they should be, um, I gave up. Um, to be perfectly honest, I gave up on the chart. Um, I have realized that you have plenty of fabric. Now your background fabric, you're going to have just enough. You have enough for a little bit of incidentals, but not a whole lot extra of background. Your colors, you can do whatever you want to do. You've got lots. So I have to be completely honest, these last couple months, um, I've given up on the chart. I just want to do what I want to do. You know, I'll make sure that my block is, you know, I got some green ones, I got some brown and blue, the rest of it, eh. You know, quilting is not about following the recipe exactly. We're not baking. We're just having fun. So month four, this month, we are doing our star block. Um, you may know this one. This is like an Ohio star, star block, if you've done one of those before. It's kind of the same way. What you're going to start with is, um, again, we're doing a whole bunch of goose units. Same as last month. You're going to have a rectangle of your background and you're going to have some matching squares of your color of your choice. You are also making two sizes. You'll see we'll be making like a 12 inch block and like a 24 inch block by the end of this month. So you'll see there'll be two different sizes. So again, you're going to have four matching goose units to create your Ohio star block and they come together. I'm going to move this guy out of the way and you'll just make your star pieces and piecing your block together is just as if you're putting a nine patch together again we have nine blocks we're gonna sew these three pieces together sew these three pieces together and sew those and then sew them all together and you're gonna have this really cool large star block and then we'll put him aside and then you'll essentially get him all pieced together. Again, you're going to have two sizes. You're going to have a big one and you're going to have a little one. And then from last month, you have all of these half square triangles. You may have sewn them together like this. You may have sewn your units together already. I mentioned last month that you could do whatever you wanted to. Sew those together or keep them in half square triangles. I chose to keep them in half square triangles. They fit better in my little project bag. And then you'll see, you'll take your smaller 
of the star blocks and your large half square triangles and you can shuffle these up so they have them all mix matched where your star points don't match in color that is personal preference if you're thinking oh no they have to be yellow on yellow on one point I'm missing some they're somewhere here and you keep making them so depending on how you want your points to be I like the mismatched um, if we're gonna match them up I feel like they should all be the same color but it's completely up to you but you can do whatever you want. There's no right or wrong way to make your block. Okay? And then there's your block. And then again, you have your solid pieces. So again, it's the same thing. So when we made this block, we just had a solid square and then board it around. This one, our solid square, is actually a star point. And instead of making a goose unit here, we did half square triangles. And there you go. And those are the blocks we're making. So again, we're making a little one using last month's pieces to make a large one. Super cool, super fun. Again, a quarter inch seam allowance is pretty important to making this block come out really nice. To be able to get those points to come out nicely, ensuring you're really sewing on that line straight, your seam allowance is consistent. Again, a quarter of an inch is your perfect option. And every quilting adventure you make, that seam allowance is gonna make or break a point. So we'll make this block, and then you're also, you'll have made more goose units. And this one, they're putting a cute little border on it. Just like when we did, our pinwheel blocks, we ended up putting a little one and a half inch border around it to make it up to size. Same thing here. We just sewed two goose units together. It's reverse from what we're usually doing. We're taking a rectangle of color and putting our background on the back and then putting our one and a half inch border around it. And then doing that. And then that is all we're doing this month is making two sizes of a star and a star block and some more goose units. So again, repetition is what we're all about in color dance, is to making sure that you're just confident in your straight piecing and your quarter inch seam allowance. So now we're gonna talk about, now we kinda know the construction of this month, let's talk about another way to make a flying goose unit. One more thing before I get rid of this, talking about seam allowances, what's gonna happen when you sew these two half square triangles together? You're gonna come up with this funny little, it's gonna look wrong. It's gonna look almost like that. Um, I'm gonna sew that together so you can see it. It's not wrong, it is your seam allowance. So let me sew these two together, I'm gonna do mismatched, and then I'll show you what I'm talking about right there. Okay, so I went ahead and just sewed my quarter inch seam allowance. So see how the black comes into this point and then you've got this a whole lot of extra? That's your quarter inch seam allowance. So that is perfectly normal. The other thing you'll notice is that this now rectangle fits perfectly on top of my star block. Whereas before, just lining them up, they looked too big. But again, everything is measured off your quarter inch seam allowance. So once those two get sewn together, it will fit just as pretty as this one. So then when we sew these together, again, you can decide whether you're gonna go across this way, sew these three pieces, or if you wanna sew these three pieces first. But just keep in mind, it has to go in straight seams because we don't wanna sew with this one on and then, you know, go all the way around. But when we sew this piece to our star block, It'll line up perfectly, and you can just come all the way across. And I press, again, all of my stuff to the dark, but you can see if you were to stitch right along your quarter of an inch, your quarter of an inch is gonna land right at that point and keep going, which is going to make sure that this guy lines up perfectly, quarter inch there, and that these little guys here will be tucked into your seam allowance. So you'll have another perfect point right there. So I wanted to show you that because I want to make sure you know that's not wrong. Don't trim this block. That's perfect because you still have more seams to complete before this block is actually completed. Okay, so if you're someone who really is enjoying the goose units and even the half square triangle units, um, this ruler, the Flying Geese No Math Ruler is fantastic. You can get it at our website at fabricpatch.net or possibly your local quilt store may have this in stock and go support them too. If you can't find it, I will gladly send it to you. 
What you need to know is all of the math is written right on your ruler. You can see all of those lines, which is really nice because a lot of the times our special place in our sewing room gets lost and that's okay. You do come with your ruler. You do have a fun little sheet of how to use your ruler and what you need to know. But the best thing about the no math ruler is again, all your math is written on here and there's no waste. So all these little half square triangles that we have left over from making these, we don't have to deal with that. We're just gonna make two, we're gonna make four um, flying geese units at one time using one large block and four little blocks. And let's go ahead and we're gonna do, right on your ruler, you can see it's gonna say your solid line. We're gonna cut one square of the solid line and we're gonna cut four squares out of the dotted line. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut um, five squares out real fast and I'll show you how to put it together. So I've got my one big square and my four little squares. Oh, four, sorry, four little squares. Um, and now we're gonna sew them together. Again, um, if you lose this, you've got it right here. I love when a ruler designer decides to put all of the good information right on the ruler. And you can cut right with this ruler. I mean, it lines up perfectly depending on what size of the ruler you're gonna cut on. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna follow these instructions. So we're gonna take our large one, we're gonna draw, again, just like we've been doing, draw our diagonal line, and we're gonna lay one on opposite corners. And then we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew on a quarter of an inch on either side of the line. So again, this line we drew will be our cut line. We're gonna sew a quarter inch on both sides. Now I'm gonna cut on my line. And it's gonna seem hokey. I'm um, gonna, you probably noticed, I just overlapped those perfectly. I didn't care, I just stuck, stuck one, stuck the other. Doesn't matter which one is on the bottom or which one's on top, as long as they're stacked. We're gonna cut that right on the line from point to point. And now we have two of these fun looking hokey dudes going on. Looks like a really bad heart. But then we're gonna go ahead, go to the ironing board real fast. We're gonna press these so they're nice and flat. Again, I'm pressing to the dark. So my dark happens to be to the top here. Yours could be pointed that way. No, no way is wrong, just pressing to the dark. All right, we've got two hokey hearts and two small squares left. What we're gonna do is take our square wrong side down. Our line we've drawn on, drawn on is gonna go from the bottom point through the center of that heart. Same thing on this one. There's our line, right sides together, from the bottom point right through the center of that heart. Again, you're gonna sew on a quarter inch on either side of the line. All right, there they're all sewn. Again, same thing. We're now gonna go ahead and cut on that drawn line. I'm gonna cut that one. We're gonna cut this one. And again, you can use your scissors. Um, you don't have to use a rotary cutter. It's not wrong. And then, now you have four. We're gonna go to the iron one last time, but you have four perfect flying goose units. So again, if we're making that star block, we have perfect goose units to make our star points and there is zero waste. We do not have to square this up. We do not have to figure out what to do with some leftover half square triangle units. Nothing goes in the nothing goes in the garbage. So it is a great way to make goose units with very little effort and four at one time. It's not pressing, trimming, cutting, throwing away. It is a really, really good way. So I'm gonna press these real fast. We'll look at them and then we'll look at our blocks we've made so far. So there, there they are. So there is no trimming, no squaring up, but you do have these little dog ears going on. Just the same dog ears we have when we make half square triangles, so no big deal. We're just gonna take a nice pair of sharp scissors and we're just gonna snip those off. These are just gonna add bulk in your seam allowance that is unnecessary. So it's nice to get those clipped off. But then you have a perfect quarter inch here to assemble your blocks and then you can keep sewing. Um, the reason it says no math is if you're thinking, well, there's math because I've got to cut the pieces. The math is because all of it's written on the ruler. You just have to know what size goose unit you need to make your block. So they're gonna say, oh, you need a uh, one and a half by three inch goose unit to make this block. Well, you'd come down here and see, ooh, what do we need here? Oh, it's gonna be a D. So you'll be cutting one D square here and two, four. or excuse me, four D squares here. So super, super easy. So all you have to do is know the numbers. 
and the ruler has done all of the math and configuring for you to make four goose units with no waste. So that's month four. A star and a star block, super fun. A little few more goose units. Now you have enough fabric, even background, if you want to get this ruler. Maybe you have this ruler. Maybe your neighbor has it. Maybe someone in the guild has it. Borrow it. Try it. You have enough leftover fabric, background, and of course you've got tons of colors left over if you have the kit try it but you'll see when you are looking at all the blocks we've made so far the majority of the shapes we're going to use quilting are squares rectangles half square triangles and of course a goose unit and a goose unit is essentially a faster way of making two half square triangles into one so you'll see that a lot of the blocks we're doing you can easily do with your no math and you'll see why this is a very beginner friendly project is we're doing all of the fundamentals all of the shapes all in once and we're repeating those steps each month more lines more quarter inch more points so it's really fun so so far we've done all of these um, lots of little different sizes of half square triangles sewing things together adding a little bit of border treatment and making different sized blocks. So we have got one more class. So in a couple weeks, you'll see our last class. We're gonna do a cute little pine tree that uses um, different sizes of goose blocks to create a cute little pine tree. And then we're gonna be into finishing the quilt together. So we'll see you in just a couple weeks and we'll get our last block done. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.